on the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Talking Catholic, the diocesan podcast for the Diocese of Camden. I am Marian Ellen Nunez, and I'm here with uh, Mike Wallace. How are you today? I am very good. I'm, I've been looking forward to this uh, this episode of the podcast because in addition to it being on a topic that I love, you know, Catholic schools education and in a, a work that we do a lot is a lot of fundraising work. Um, it's also, I think, going to be our largest Zoom uh, interview we've ever done. We have quite a few people on here. If we had two more people, I think we I need to have another page of my Zoom open. So, uh, so this is going to be an interesting. So, hopefully, I'm just saying all that for our listeners will understand that if you hear a lot of voices, that's because we got a lot of voices on today's call, but uh, or today's episode. But I like that. I like it a lot, actually. But uh, Marianella, before we jump into the the interview, you know, we've had uh, we had a great interview last week um that that posted last week with our school nurses and i just want to refer back to it because it's without a doubt one of the best episodes i think we've ever done it's i feel terrible because uh mary beth abate who was a part of the call uh, we kept losing her connection so she wasn't able to be on it for very long um, but she, she's done incredible work as a school nurse for years and years and years. And we had, uh, two other nurses on that were, were amazing. And it was just a great conversation. So if you didn't get a chance to listen to that episode, it's maybe something that whatever for it, reason didn't pique your interest. I hope people will go back and listen to it because uh, it was fantastic. And we're in the middle of, of uh, nurses week right now. Um, and it's been quite a time for nurses, uh, across every, every entity, uh, whether they're in hospitals or in doctor's offices or in schools, school offices. Um, so I really hope uh, if you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, go back and take a listen to it because it was really a, a wonderful episode. It's one of those episodes where I actually got a lot of feedback from it, uh, Mary and Ella. So thank you so much for putting that together. It was a great, it was a great opportunity. Sure. And I will have a suggestion for those listeners who have, you know, nurses in their families and like, you know, or friends who are nurses, like just send them to them and uh, have them listen because uh, it's, it was just such a great experience. And I think, you know, the work of the nurses is uh, so applaudable and we need to continue to encourage, you know, that work of service and it's a work of God. So come on and send it out as a gift. <laughs> That's a great point. That, that You know what? It is a great gift. You got any mothers who are, uh, and, you, and you need a last minute gift for, for their mothers as a nurse? Send them this episode where all we do is talk about the greatness of nurses, because uh, particularly school nurses, because it was it was a really wonderful episode. But uh, and we're staying in the Catholic schools vein this week. Uh, another conversation on Catholic schools, which is good. It's one thing if we can always talk about uh, on the podcast is because there's so many great stories that come out of Catholic schools. But this one is really something about how our Catholic schools are able to provide uh, education for people who may not be able to necessarily afford to go to a Catholic school. So, Marinelle, uh, we're, we're talking about the South Jersey Scholarship Fund today, right? Yes, and uh, this is such a uh, an important uh, mission in our office to keep this fund alive and and running and uh, being successful. And for that, we actually brought the experts on this field, and uh, I'm going to start introducing our uh, superintendent of schools, Dr. Uh, Bill Watson, who is here with us. How are you, Bill? Welcome. I'm I'm great, Mary Nella. Thank you for having me, and uh, it's always great to be on the podcast. And I am uh, very appreciative of the continued attention to Catholic schools for the for the podcast, um, and also to all of my colleagues here who are here in support of uh, Catholic schools as part of this podcast. So it's a it's a it's an exciting podcast for me too, Mike. <laughs> Good. You are an always Bill. welcome person in this podcast, Bill. So we're happy to have you for sure. Thank you. Um, and we also have with us today, Marianne Gilbride, who is the Director of Development for the Diocese of Camden, and she is also a board member and secretary of uh, the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. Welcome, Marianne. How are you? Good, Mary Noah. Thanks so much. I am also really excited to be uh, a part of this. I am, uh, you know how they have cradle Catholics. I am um, almost like a, a cradle school 
attendee person, um, went through all my years of school, um, Catholic school, and sent my children to Catholic school, and um, thrilled to be a part of the South Jersey Scholarship Fund uh, that helps um, students to be able to attend Catholic school because of um, concerns with uh, tuition that their families might have. So I'm very happy to be a part of this. Thank you. We're happy to have you. And for anyone who, who, since we were talking about previous podcasts, if you go back two podcasts ago, we actually had Mary on, Marianne on that time as well. Ta- another great episode where Mary McCusker and I learned far more than we probably, we probably should have already known a lot of what we learned uh, if we were more financially savvy. But Marianne was on uh, talking about planned giving and, and end of life issues. Uh, it was a great podcast. It was uh, it was surprisingly faith filled <clears throat> considering we were talking about, you know, how to handle, you know, your finances and, and you know, how to do planned giving and, and your end of life decisions. But it was a really a great episode. So if you haven't listened to that, go back to podcasts and you get to hear Marianne talk about another thing she's great at. So thank you, Marianne. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Um, So we also have with us Mary Beth uh, Peabody, who is the Marketing and Communications Director for the Diocese of Camden. How are you, Mary Beth? Well, Mary and Ella, I'm great, but I don't want Mike to think he lost his job because he's actually Marketing and Communications Director for the Diocese, and I am Marketing and Communications Manager for the school's office. So just so everyone knows, (laughs) it is not going anywhere. (laughs) Well, hey Beth, you can have my job anytime you want. I assure you, Mike. I don't think I could fill those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> well, they are big shoes. That's true, but so, mostly physically. Yeah, I'm a size 15. They're very big shoes. They are big shoes, but I think I think I my defined my defined world of schools is just right for me. So. <laughs> you do a great job with it. That's that's one of the that's one of the great things about our diocese is uh, our bosses have done a wonderful job of making sure we bring in good communications people. So my, my job is quite simple in that regard because I have uh, great folks that I work with. Yeah, well, sorry about that, Mary Beth, but I think, you know, Mike would appreciate to maybe have a week off and have you leave the diocese for that week. <laughs> so let's see about that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll um, talk about that off Zoom, huh? Sure. <laughs> so... Let me continue with our introductions here. We have a very special person in our podcast today. Monsignor Martin is with us here, and he's also a board member of the Scholarship Fund. Welcome, uh, Monsignor Martin. Well, I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation, especially to be able to participate in the discussion we'll have uh, today regarding the South Jersey Scholarship Fund, which uh, provides assistance for Catholic school students. I have been, uh, this will give away my age, but I have been involved in Catholic education in our diocese for 52 years. I've been in four of the high schools, so I certainly have experienced uh, firsthand uh, how the scholarship fund uh, has uh, enabled students to continue to be at a Catholic school and, and, and get the Catholic education, which is so important. I've, I've had so many experiences of, of frustration when people have had to uh, disenroll their students purely on financial basis. And it would make me almost sick to my stomach when that would happen. And we would try everything in our power to keep them there. But so something like this scholarship fund is so essential uh, to um, helping uh, parents and students continue their Catholic education. And, and we know how firm of a believer in Catholic education you are, and appreciate all of the ministry and the life you've dedicated to, you know, to this ministry in the diocese. So thank you for all that, um, Mr. Martin. Um, and last but not least, uh, we also have uh, Christine Messina, who is part of uh, the board for the South Jersey Scholarship Fund as well. She's one of the board members. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Marinella. And I have to say thank you to Mike, who just gave me that last minute perfect Mother's Day gift idea. I do have nurses in my family, and I'm so thrilled to be able to share this podcast, the one that you referenced as a special way to show gratitude and appreciation for them. And If we were to stay with that theme of creative Mother's Day gifts, it's worth mentioning it is also Teacher Appreciation Week this week, since we're talking about education. 
So there you have it. If you've got teachers in your family who are also mothers, I think this this podcast will still be befitting since we're so focused on the value of education and the value of Catholic schools education. Absolutely. You know, we, we probably gave a little bit of short shrift and maybe we bring Mary Beth Peabody back on about this uh, only because you, you mentioned it. Um, it was Teacher Appreciation Week this past week, and I have to give credit to South Jersey Catholic schools who went above and beyond both the school's office and the individual schools themselves with um, giving their teachers and their administrators the recognition they deserve this week. I know my son's um, school, St. Michael's and Clayton, rolled out the red ca- carpet on, uh, it was, I forget if it was Monday or Tuesday, and there was a nice round of applause for every student or for every teacher as they entered the, uh, the school on, uh, on that day. And Mary Beth, that, that happened a lot this week, right? We, we did a good job of letting the, uh, mm-hmm. the, the teachers and administrators know how, just how loved they are, right? It was just a fantastic week. It really was. And that, that whole idea came about at an advancement director meeting when our advancement directors, Mary and Al and I were on a call with a Zoom call with them. And they said, oh, our teachers, I mean, our parents keep asking what they can do for teachers, but they can't come into the schools. And what can we do? And one thing went to another. And we said, well, let's have a surprise party throughout the diocese. And so we picked Tuesday as official Teacher Appreciation Day of Teacher Appreciation Week. And from there, we, we did a banner for every school, and then the schools took it. Um, every school was asked to hang the banner and roll out the red carpet. And beyond that, they did. Uh, they, it was so much fun. We had great pictures, and we had nice news coverage. And so, awesome week. Yeah, it was and a great week. Really should be commended. And the bottom line is our teachers really deserve it. They have been spectacular. South Jersey scholarship, uh, South Jersey teachers rock. That was the theme in the banner. So you guys like check it out on social media for our school. And, and for any of our listeners who don't know, um, South Jersey's Catholic schools were open all five days a week uh, since September um, with, with a remote learning option for those who required it. But um, school was available every single day since the beginning of the school year for every student. And it was wonderful. Uh, this, the schools have been fantastic. The parents couldn't have been happier. And, uh, and we, I'm happy to report that there were no major incidents in any of our schools. We, we would have issues where an infection would pop up and we had methodology in, in, uh, in place to take care of that. Sometimes uh, it would be a small portion of, those, of the kids would have to quarantine for two weeks. Um, but it was absolutely phenomenal. So uh, kudos to everybody involved, particularly our superintendent, Dr. Watson, who uh, did such a great job of making sure that we had these things in place. So kudos to you as well, Bill. Great job. Thank, thanks, Mike. And, uh, you know, I think it's everybody has done their part. And that's been what's been so great about this year is we've all done different. Our parts have changed a little bit from what anybody expected, whether you're a principal, a teacher, a parent, a student, anybody. Um but we've done everybody involved, I think, has really done their part and done it extremely well. And and we've been able we said at the beginning of the year that we wanted to have as many uh, students in school as often as possible, so long as we could do it safely. And and we've been able to do that. And um, it's been a great blessing to the kids. And that's really what this is about. It's about the students. And it's been a great blessing to them. Uh, so uh, thank you for recognizing that. And, and uh, again, I would you know, I would like to echo uh Mary Beth's um, sentiment about our teachers because our teachers were the real rock stars as we as we celebrated this week in uh, doing the day to day work that was necessary uh, every day with students to keep them on track and to do so in a in quite a different way this year. No, it was it was wonderful, and I was as a father, I was happy, and as the PR director, I was very happy as well. It was a, it was it was a great option, and so actually, what we're talking about today dovetails perfectly into that, which is the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. Uh, this is not something new. This is something that's existed since uh, the turn of the millennia in uh, two thousand and one, I believe it was developed. Yep. Marianne, can you give us a little bit of the background of how the uh, the South Jersey Scholarship Fund came to be? Sure. What it is. Um, you're, you're right. It was um, back in 2001. Monsignor Marucci was the uh, director of development at the time, and um, he was responsible for um, getting a lot of this started. And the purpose was to um, have a way for students in need to be able to receive uh, scholarship assistance uh, to be able to 
uh, attend schools within the Diocese of Camden without um, reference to uh, race or nationality. Um, they, uh, the, the funds that were raised were not to go into an endowment fund, but were to be used up completely within two years um, so that the, uh, the money was constantly being used uh, to support the students. And through the years, I mean, we've done, um, there've been a number of different fundraising endeavors uh, for the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. Uh, several years ago, we had a concert series that uh, supported the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. And, and, uh, and so it's actually been, and it's been an incredibly useful piece of, uh, useful tool within the South Jersey Catholic Schools ability to make sure that we were providing uh, scholarships to, to students in need. Sure. Um, Bill, do you have an idea of like, you know, how impactful the, this, not just maybe the South Jersey Scholarship Fund, but scholarship opportunities like this are to um, to parents who need this kind of support for their for their kids. Uh, sure. So we have um, the way that the uh, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has uh, articulated it: uh, Catholic schools should be available, accessible, and affordable for anybody who wants to send their kids there. Um, and we believe that. I mean, the message of Catholic schools is for everyone. Um, and so we do all that we can to uh, eliminate any barriers to attendance. Of course, fi finances are, are one of those um, potential barriers for a family. So um, one of the things that, you know, we do is that we, we try to offset that cost in many ways. I mean, the most basic is um, let's take an elementary school, the cost to educate a student in an elementary Catholic elementary school right now. And this is a really broad figure. It changes depending on the school is about $7,500 and tuition is about $5,500. So, I mean, that very broad, broadly speaking. So there's immediately about $2,000 um, kind of right out of the chute that is um, uh, a lower cost than the actual cost to educate. And those funds come from a variety of sources. Parishes support Catholic schools. That's a large part of that support. Um, and they also come from the funds that the schools raise. So anybody who has kids in Catholic schools are uh, very familiar with fundraisers and uh, annual funds and those kinds of things. And all of that really <laughs> helps to go to offset the cost of the, of the education. Schools also sort of go beyond that and raise additional funds through their fund funding to have kind of internal sources of tuition assistance. So there's, we meet some of the need that way. Uh, we meet, uh, but we can't meet all of it. And, and across the diocese, um, parents who, who attend, uh, whose kids attend Catholic schools apply for financial assistance and uh, do so through a, a third party that kind of does the analysis and then lets the school know uh, what they, uh, what, if they need financial assistance and how much. And we're able to meet um, a portion of that, but not all of it. So there's still a huge need in addition to the fundraising and the parish contributions um, that occur at the elementary schools and at the high schools of their advancement efforts and the independent scholarships that they have. There's still a huge need for scholarships for parents whose kids want to, or for, for kids um, of parents who want to send those kids to Catholic school. And that, that's where the South Jersey Scholarship Fund in particular Particular comes into, into play. Every school in the uh, South Jersey Catholic schools, elementary or high school, uh, receives some support from the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. So we have students in every one of our schools who have at least, there's at least one scholar in those schools that has a scholarship from the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. And so I believe last year there were 75, this current year, there are 75 students across South Jersey who are benefiting directly from the efforts of um, uh, for the generosity of those who contribute to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. So this is a critical mechanism that we have for meeting the need, uh, meeting really the, the priority to make Catholic schools available, accessible, and above all, affordable for any family who wants their kids to attend Catholic schools. And, and we're extremely grateful for um, the, the the contributions of the board um, in continuing this uh, scholarship program. And then of course, for the generosity of the, uh, those who, the donors to it that make Catholic education possible for those 75 kids. Um, and that, and any, um, any one of those students might not be in Catholic school, 
without the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. And that's just an amazing impact when you think about how many lives are touched by the generosity of uh, the donors and, and the board of the, of the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. Yeah, that, you know, that does, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Maria. I was just gonna say, um, you're, you're so right, Bill. And um, the, since the year 2001, when it was first created, um, we've raised over 3 million to, to help students over the years. And the type of activities really ranged during that time. Um, there were some events um, down at the casinos, dinners that were held with many sponsors and, and ticket holders who um, donated very generously. Um, Mike uh, talked about the um, um, the series of concerts that we had had over the years, which also raised money each year for the scholarship fund. And this year, um, certainly because of the pandemic, um, our, we were not able to um, conduct uh, a a large scale event this year. And that's where this spring sprint for scholarships that um, Christine so um, aptly penned the name of um, is, is coming into play this year. We are, um, you know, how sometimes you need to jump through hoops. Well, this, um, this sprint is um, helping us to jump those hurdles that um, we may have experienced because of the pandemic. And so we are reaching out in uh, uh, a positive way to um, solicit funds this year um, through the spring sprint for scholarships. Yeah. So Christine, you know, you were, uh, you were on, as we were kind of thinking about how to manage, you know, fundraising in the middle of the pandemic, we were, we were able to, to cajole you onto a Zoom call, which you couldn't have been nicer to, to join us. And uh, yeah, we we kind of came up with this idea for the spring sprint, but, you know, right before we get to talk about that a little bit, I would like to talk to you, Christine. We heard about uh, Monsignor Martin's long dedicated service to the Catholic schools. So certainly he was a no brainer to put on a, a board. Um, the, in your case, you know, what kind of helped you gravitate towards the, the South Jersey scholarship fund? Sure. Well, for me, it's really all about family and family tradition. I am, second generation Italian American working in a family owned business and something that my father who's still very active in the business always instilled in all of us was the sense of purpose and that with gratitude comes the the mission to give back and so when I think about my family's history my grandfather came here on a boat he was orphaned by the time he was 14 and had to make his way in the world without an education. And what that meant for him was working in a factory line and raising three children on a factory worker salary. And they certainly, as my father would say, they may not have had a lot of material things, but they had food on the table and plenty of love. You take that one generation further and what what my father's family could afford at the time was a public school education. My father graduated with a high school degree, and that was in an era where you could still make your way in the world, perhaps without an undergraduate or master's degree. And my father always credited mentors along the way, you know, a variety of mentors, you know, be it uh, spiritual or a teacher that he may have mm -hmm. had. And so, the mission of education and making that opportunity available to families like his who were struggling to make ends meet just became really important to him and something, as I said, he passed down to myself, my brother, my sister, and the culture of our business. So our firm has been involved with the South Jersey Scholarship Fund close to its inception. There was a year when my father and his partner were being honored in Atlantic City, and they reluctantly accepted in order to advance awareness, but they would not take the podium. And they put me forward to uh, do the do the thank yous and, and get the word out and continue to spread awareness. And so it's just been a part of, as I said, our family tradition for a long time. My personal motivation is, you know, now I am a mother and I do have deep concern for all that is happening in the world, to put it lightly. And that's why, you know, I did want to mention teacher appreciation. And I'm so glad that you all spoke to the amazing accomplishment 
that you had and welcomed children in person, in seats, five full days a week, what that meant for families, what that meant for parents trying to struggle the balance between work and family and managing this health event is just tremendous. And so in my role as a board member, I am so excited and so passionate about letting the business community know and the community at large know what a tremendous transformative job Catholic schools are doing. One, to make this opportunity available to families. Two, to make others aware that we have a way to bridge that really crucial gap right now. When you see the thank you letters from parents and children and they speak to how life-changing their Catholic school experience is, it's just very motivating. And so I am humbled and privileged and thrilled to be a voice to talk about the great work that's being done, but also to, to inform folks that there's more that we can do. And if you're among those folks who are doing well at this time, and it's a balance, you know, some, some businesses are, you know, as they pivoted, they are thriving, some are getting along, but wherever you are in whatever small amount or greater amount you're able to give, it's just going to a tremendous cause that is immediately impactful getting those children in their, in, the, in their seat. And as Monsignor said, the, to avoid the heartbreak of having to turn a family or child away is a gift that some of us are able to give. And if you can, I hope that the business community and families who can will, will join us. Christine, that's, you know, this is why I like having a podcast is I like to ask a question and just let a person roll. That was uh, that was perfect. That's uh, that really encapsulates um, you know what a Catholic schools are trying to do and what you know the people who are donors of Catholic schools uh, want to do. You know your father. I've I've had the pleasure of uh, speaking with your father on numerous occasions, both back when I worked for another entity and uh, at this entity. And you know he's a he's a great guy. And yeah, no no particular connection to Catholic schools when when he was growing up, and yet mm -hmm. um, he has his, his sense of dedicated service to to groups who do good work in the community is is well known. So I'm I'm happy to see that that's that's passed on a generation as well, Christine. So so kudos, thank you. Absolutely, um, and I I think what's really on the minds of so many parents, administrators, leaders in the community, were. We are now finally talking a lot more about mental health, and this global event has been a driver of that. And I just think that's another place where, you know, no matter the, the, the faith of that family, when that child is, is in a Catholic school, they are getting the spiritual support and a foundation in faith that really is the resiliency builder and is the safety net of a child growing up. And it's a way to help manage decisions and have better judgment, more faith in self, putting people first, other people first. It's just that piece that I think we are crying out for to ensure that our children are being raised with so that we can strengthen the community. And so that as we face these bigger issues, we feel confident that our children are going to thrive. And I just think, again, that's a piece that the Catholic schools deliver so beautifully. The public schools are catching up with social emotional learning, the SEL curriculum that is out there, but it's something that Catholic schools have been doing all along. Yeah. Christine, that, that's a great point. Actually, you, you, it's funny, I should have had you on the, the parish nurses podcast because um, we had a very similar conversation when we were talking to them about about how much psychological work they ended up doing. Not not you know not not, not pretending to be psychologists, but that you know a lot of the stuff that they were dealing with this year was helping people to sort of cope with the pandemic, and not just the students. They were working with faculty members and parents as well. And the fact that they were able to come together five days a week and they were actually able to be interacting with people was an incredible service to people, even beyond education. It was that communal sense, that spiritual sense, that psychological sense of being together. So that's what Catholic schools have been able to do this year and should and are being duly noted for that. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear you say that. You know, Monsignor Martin, um, you know, this is, you, you certainly have a long history in South Jersey Catholic schools and a number of different schools. Um, and so you've certainly seen the evolution of Catholic schools. Do you get the impression that we're, we're still heading in the right direction as, as Catholic schools? Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, 
as I said, I, I have been involved since 1969, and I speak uh, from four different high schools experience, but primarily Camden Catholic because I've been there for the last 37, as a matter of fact. And, well, of course, I'm retired now, but I've had the, uh, the absolute privilege of being able to remain in, in, in some senses in, in, in the uh, everyday work of Camden Catholic. Uh, uh, the bishop was kind enough when I retired to give me the title of President Emeritus, so it gives me access to the high school. And, and the current administration uh, is so welcoming to my presence there, and, and I work with the development office. I help with the annual campaign. In fact, part of my responsibility is to enter all of the gifts into the computer and generate reports. And I'm constantly amazed at the, the generosity of, of our alumni in, in helping us maintain a, an annual fund that, that uh, enables us to provide more assistance. When I was directly involved as principal and president, a large part of my, my work at that time was making sure that we had uh, the, the wherewithal to provide financial assistance because it's just so essential to keep students in, in, in the Catholic school. I mean, we were and are, um, uh, again, I speak from Camden Catholic's perspective and its relationship to the city of Camden and the students they're in, we, we provided such an opportunity for those students that they wouldn't have otherwise. And, and it, it just uh, uh, made it so clear to me the need for uh, organizations and, and uh, such as the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. We need those kinds of assistance uh, to provide that additional help that parents need. You know, when I was first, at, I started out in Paul the Six teaching back in 69. And I can, I can remember when tuition, I think it went to like $500 a year. And, and I thought to myself, oh, people aren't going to pay that. That's just <laughs> too much money, you know? So you can see the evolution of, of what it has uh, cost for Catholic education, necessarily so. At the high school level, as Dr. Watson knows, I'm sure very, better than I do, the cost of educating a student at the high school level is is really uh, incredible. Our, our tuition now is I'm, I'm not there on a daily basis, so I'm not exact sure on this, but we're over ten thousand dollars, and I'm amazed at the uh, the parents who are willing to to sacrifice so that their kids can can get that kind of education, but they need help. The need for assistance never lessens; it, it's always greater. And so while each school generates uh, an amount that they can give out for tuition assistance, and we do it by, uh, by our uh, annual fund, which uh, again is very successful because of the generosity of our alumni, but we need other sources of, of, um, of uh, financial assistance too. Uh, and there are different scholarships. And I just know experientially how essential it is for the South Jersey Scholarship Fund to to continue to be a part of, of, of that equation that, that helps people, uh, families stay in Catholic schools. Um, before I shut up for, I, I wanna express my, uh, my personal uh, congratulations to all of the uh, faculties and, and administrations of, of the, the schools, but the one I see on a daily basis is, uh, is Camden Catholic, but, but I'm sure it's the same all over. I'm just amazed at, at the work that the teachers, administrators, and the students have done during this very unusual year. I have to be honest, when we started this year in September, and all of the protocols that had to be in effect, and, and with students carrying from class to class these shields that they would put on their desk, and, and the wearing of masks, and, and all of the other protocols that had to be upheld, I thought, it's not going to work. I really was not optimistic that it was going to work, but it did. It worked remarkably because of the, uh, the outstanding uh, generosity and willingness on the part of faculty and, and the administrators who set up the programs and the students themselves and the parents. They're, they were so appreciative of what we've done. So it's just so essential that, that we continue to be able to provide uh, the assistance that we need to keep 
our schools viable financially and, and give the opportunity to these students to, to break out of uh, sometimes a, a real depth of poverty that, that only a Catholic school situation can provide for them. Monsignor Martin, thank you very much. And you actually, on top of everything else, you reminded me that I, I have to get Dr. Watson to uh, start working on his white paper regarding this year. Uh, so, because we need we need to we need to let it be known to everyone just uh, what went into being able to open our schools, and um, and people need to know that this is doable. On the off chance a pandemic will hit again, there's no reason why schools shouldn't uh, <laughs> yeah. shouldn't shouldn't be able to come together. Um, you know, I do want to get back to the, the sort of the topic at hand, which is uh, Christine, uh, Christine's extremely well-named fundraiser for this year. So we talked to Marianne talked a little bit earlier about all the different fundraisers that we've done over the years. And uh, obviously this year we couldn't do a um, do a fundraiser where we brought everyone together, which is always our preference for two reasons. One, we like to see everybody. Two, we like good food. Um, but uh, but this year we had to go with sort of a traditional uh, fundraising campaign, uh, sort of a mailing campaign and with a social media aspect to it and, uh, you know, some some online donations. So, Christine, you you actually came up with the name. Uh, where did we where did we get the name uh, Spring Spring Sprint for Scholarships? Sure. So we always try to turn a challenge into an opportunity. And when we knew that we were looking at a, a July 1st deadline to try to replicate this goal of $50,000, I thought, all right, well, we've got the need for speed now. So the word sprint came to mind. And I think just with a little alliteration, it came together. But really, we were looking at that time-bound sense of urgency. Can we raise $50,000 by July 1st and marry it to this mission of Spring Sprint for Scholarship? And like so many families, businesses, organizations, we knew we needed to pivot and, as, as we said, not do the traditional dinner or concert, but rather do a just, you know, old school campaign and really this, this outreach of letters, phone calls, emails gives the board members, gives the board members who are members of the business community the opportunity to tell the great stories that we're telling right now and inspire folks to consider donating to South Jersey Scholarship Fund. And I'm sure many of us are familiar with that old Ben Franklin quote, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. And when you marry that to the, the faith foundation that children are going to receive, I just see it as an easy choice for folks who are able to give because that dollar isn't disappearing. That dollar is being invested into that child. It is showing that that family that's working two jobs to pay the amount of tuition that they can, that they are seen, that their efforts are valued, that raising a child in this tradition is an important and worthy mission, and that we as a community can wrap around that child, wrap around that family and make sure that their education is not disrupted to make sure that they don't have to go to the main office next September and say, we're not able to make it. So that's really, you know, the mission is we do have a sense of urgency. As we said, we are rolling out this campaign, inviting folks to participate between now and July 1st. I am confident that we will reach the $50,000. I am feeling faith filled. It's just a matter of spreading the word and having a good kind of contagion, getting folks excited to spread the word with us. And something to keep in mind, you know, last year, Bishop was able to make an appeal. And, you know, he said, in instead of, you know, doing something in honor of my birthday, please consider a donation to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund. And we're so pleased that Bishop is, is behind this mission again. And we are giving more creative gift ideas out there. If there's someone that you want to pay tribute to, if there's a gift you want to give in honor of someone's graduation or in honor of Bishop's anniversary of his priesthood, these are all other ways that you can create that recognition and as and as I said, not have it just go out the door, but rather, you know, land in the heart, mind, and soul of a child and have it continue to grow. And so 
that's what makes me excited about this is, is what, you know, inspires me to get the word out to other people. That's a that's a great point, Christine. And and Bishop, as you noted, Bishop Sullivan is celebrating his 50th year as a priest uh, at the end of May. And that is exactly what he's asked for this year, is that if uh, in lieu of giving him a gift, he says, uh, please uh, consider donating to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund because uh, he's, he's just that dedicated. And last year, to, to reference what you were talking about last year, he was his 15th year as a bishop. And that's exactly, it was another massive, uh, that's a big uh, anniversary for a bishop. And uh, he asked the same thing. And, and the people really stepped up. Uh, they, they raised quite a bit of money all because of his anniversary. Now, Mary Beth, um, you, get the, uh, you get the great job of actually trying to, do, trying to make all this stuff come to fruition this year at the, for the South Jersey Scholarship Fund's uh, Spring Sprint for Scholarships. So what do we have in the hopper for plans for, like, what stories are we going to try and tell over the next two months? Well, um, just to, to, to set it straight, I, it's not entirely on me. I'm working in conjunction with uh, the development office and Stacey Napolitano in particular, who did a great job of putting together uh, the initial mailing that's going out, which uh, is coming from development and uh, that, well, coming from this, the South Jersey Scholarship Fund, but uh, that is a mailer and a little, uh, an insert with a little bit more information announcing the fund. And um, last week we had an article in the Star Herald, which we're going to post on social media, kind of in conjunction with the timing of the letter. Um, and then we just, over the next eight weeks, or so I guess seven weeks, really, we have, um, we'll be having some letters, uh, articles in the Star Herald, some ads in the Star Herald, and then using social media to just tell stories about what's going on in our schools. We have some families who have benefited from the scholarship fund that are happy to, to talk about that. Um, they're, you know, express their gratitude publicly about that. Um, but also just showing what, what we're doing in our schools. Um, we've got video footage for, that we've been uh, working on really over the last year, capturing some families and some activities. Uh, we just had a, um, an arts program for our middle school students that was on Zoom. And we're gonna be featuring some of that, which very exciting part of that was that we were able to work with students from our high schools and learn what they're doing in the art programs in our high schools. And those students, some of those were videotaped and the feedback that we got from our middle school students was that they absolutely loved hearing and seeing from people just a few years older than them to see what they have to look forward to, that they found that really inspirational. So those are just some of the ideas that we've had, um, you know, about sharing, letting people know what's going on in our schools and why it's so important to make sure that, it, you know, as Bill said, we're not, we're creating as many possibilities as possible for people to be able to afford something that the Catholic church believes is, should be accessible to everyone. Yeah. And, and the truth of the matter is that, you know, we have, you know, Mary Beth, you've been working with Catholic schools for a long time. I've been working. I've been, I'm a student of Catholic schools in South Jersey for many, many years, um, many, many years ago, rather. Um, but also, you know, the time I've been here, I'd say a third of my work tends to be around schools. And, you know, some of the stories that come out of them are, are truly amazing. And they would only be able to happen at a Catholic school. You know, they, these are things that you wouldn't be able to see in public schools. It's, which, let's face it, that that is the, the difference between, you know, a public school and a, and a Catholic school. And yes, you know, Monsignor Martin noted that the Catholic schools are very expensive, but you get a lot of you get a lot back for that expense. Um, I mean, Bill. You know, we've talked about it for years, you know, some of these differences between between a Catholic school education and elementary school education. But it's it's not apocryphal. I mean, it's legitimate. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that, um, you know, I'd like to say, say uh, that's important about the work that we're doing here with the spring sprint and the scholarships, you know, and making Catholic schools accessible is, uh, you know, and as Monsignor Martin noted, you know, they are. Catholic schools, there's a cost to them. And we don't want that cost to be prohibitive in part because then we run the risk of the, um, of the schools being el elite academies, right? Mm -hmm. So we run the risk of them being um, only for the people who can, uh, who can pay for them. Now, I'd like to say in some ways we are elite academies because the content and the experience are elite. They, and, 
and I think as, as Mary Beth just described, and as you described, and as we've all kind of lived and then witnessed, these kinds of experiences um, grow from a shared commitment of everybody involved in the school, from the teachers to the principals, to the presidents in the high schools, to the parents, really even to the students as they become more and more engaged as Catholic school students, the shared commitment to the, to the total growth of the, or the growth of the, the whole student, so to speak, you know, um, and we care for the whole student in a, in a, in a Catholic school. So we are, um, uh, we, and we believe that the spirituality um, and relationship with Jesus Christ is, is critical to who we are as human beings. It's the meaning of life, you know, and, and we could do that and we have the freedom to do that. And I really think that that intentionality, that uh, being in, intentional about accepting God's presence in the school community together is what sets us apart and allows us to be excellent and allows us to be elite in our um, academics and our athletics and so forth. But I think there's an important distinction um, between being elite as in excellence and being elite uh, maybe as elitist, you know, only those who can pay can get in. And that's, that's, you know, where we really, really, you know, need the contributions of um, uh, donors to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund, uh, where we recognize and appreciate and value the sacrifices the parents make to send their kids to Catholic school. Uh, no matter what your income, you sacrifice something to get to, to come to Catholic school, no matter who you are. Um, we just, you know, efforts like the Spring Sprint are really intended to uh, make sure that those sacrifices do not become prohibitive uh, for any any family, for any child, uh, so that they can truly experience what makes the Catholic school special. That, that's amazing. It's like um, sort of like I have a question for for Christine. Like if you had, um, you know, really influential, uh, more than billionaire person in front of you right now, what would you tell that person uh to sort of like encourage that person to give to the South Jersey College Fund? Sure, well, again, I would really reference the, the mission that we have this really unique opportunity to affect change and to lift up a child, to lift up that family that, as we said, is already making sacrifices and feeling confident that, that the work works. I mean, we just told so many of the success stories. So to say that, you know, this gift that you will make will be transformative for the child. It will be life-changing for the family. It will change the trajectory of the, of the child's life. I think are among the most persuasive things that you can say. And I, I say it with confidence. There's just a difference that we just spoke to. And I love the distinction between, you know, the content and the experience being elite, but the, the acceptance or the, we, we don't want there to be a barrier for this quality that exists to be connected to that child and to that family. So really that's what I would emphasize is the fact that, you know, whatever size gift you make, it is, it is no small gift because it's going to ensure that a child can have a continuum of education, of faith, of excellent experiences, that they are going to become a great, you know, leader, a great person in business and community and continue to pay that gift back. And th that's really important what you mentioned, like there's no small gift of like that was going to be my uh, next question for Marianne. Like, you know, what will you tell to those who just have a few, you know, extra extra monies out there that, you know, would like to do something good with them? Like, you know, there's no small gift. Right, Marianne? Uh, absolutely. The thing is, it's um, it's all about the sacrifice um, in appreciation of what you've experienced in your life, possibly through the, the teachers and the education that you have, giving back something um, so that other students have the ability to experience the, the success that you had. And my gift 
may be very different from Christine's gift, but my gift needs to be that um, generous outreach based on my financial ability. And so whether that gift is $5 or $5,000 or half a million, um, it, it, it's my gift and, and something that, that I can afford and something that I want to, to offer back. We can, um, our students are taught about giving back, about stewardship, about sharing what we have. And, and it's always an individual choice. We, we can give to a need or we can feel that need to give. And I think that's something that we offer to our students, the fact that um, we need to have that urge to give back. Thank you. And, you know, like, according to the article on the Star Herald about the Spring Sprint uh, fundraiser, like there's 20% uh, of the uh, unmet need, nearly like $2 million. So in case there's somebody listening out there mm -hmm. who's willing to give us $2 million to increase the South Jersey uh, scholarship fund, you know, please reach out. Any of us will take it any time. Right, Mike? Absolutely. $50,000 $50, is just a goal. We're, it's, we're a more Catholic, it's a Catholic modest number. Yeah, right? that's very, yeah exactly. It's just us being modest. You're more than welcome to give as much as you'd like. The, um, but we know we're also realists, too. The, um, but, I mean, going back to our previous conversation from a couple of podcasts ago, you know, when you're thinking of your planned giving gifts, you know, feel free to consider the South Jersey Scholarship Fund as a possible location for donations. If, in fact, you don't have any particular school you want to donate to, remember, by donating to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund, you're actually supporting all the schools. So it's a it's a great opportunity. And, uh, um, you know, there are formulas in, in place by as as Dr. Watson uh, regarding how we you know distribute uh, scholarships. But every single person, every single school that receives scholarship money, every single a uh, student that receives scholarship money. I mean, there there is genuine need there. Um, it's not something that's, you know, given to friends or something like that. It's something where, you know, there's a demonst uh, demonstrative uh, need uh, for, 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 uh, for a scholarship. So, um, so everybody, I mean, please feel confident that when you're donating to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund or any of our schools, please know that your, uh, your scholarships are being, that, that money is being used uh, specifically for what it was intended for, which is incredibly useful because it's it, in our world that's unrestricted fund funding, and, and and you can actually use it in situations like where people really need it for for, for scholarship. Marianne, what were you going to say? Can we um, share the um, the link if people want to go online? Of course, um, they can go to bit b i t dot lee l y forward slash s j scholarship fund. Um, and you can make your gift online. You can call our office, 856-583-6125. Um, and you can even mail in your gift to the South Jersey Scholarship Fund, 631 Market Street, Camden, New Jersey. And, and Marianne, for anybody who's not able to write down the, uh, the link, if you're on the diocese website or the Catholic Schools website, there are links to donate Absolutely. Uh, to, to the, the fund that way. Yeah. And the, the diocese website is very simple. It's camdendiocese.org. And South Jersey Catholic Schools is very simple as well. Cath South Jersey Catholic Schools.org. We, we try to make that the URL address as remember, uh, easy to remember as possible. The, um, but it's, it's true. And, you know, we, we really do have a lot of uh, great opportunities out there for, for giving. And quite frankly, if you or someone you know is looking for a school, um, you know, is not interested in a public school uh, option, but would it really has a desire for for Catholic school or private school. Um, you know, you should consider uh, checking out the South Jersey Catholic Schools org website and learning more about our schools. Uh, the things that the things that happen in our schools would not be able to happen in a public school. There our dedication to prayer, our dedication to service, our dedication to to being a good uh, member of society is, is really paramount. Our dedication, I mean, we talked a little bit about how we're getting through the pandemic and it's quite frankly, the fact that discipline is so important to a uh, Catholic school education. It's something, uh, and I don't mean discipline in the sense of, you know, you're going to go to the principal's office if you, if you don't wear your mask properly. I mean, discipline in the fact that you are wearing your mask properly because you understand the role it, it plays in making sure everyone else stays healthy. You know, we talked about this a couple of times on previous podcasts, but, um, 
you know, we, we all had fears that kids weren't going to be able to wear their masks or w- wouldn't wear them all the time. What, what we found was they all do a great job with that. Even my middle school child and, you know, teenagers and preteens are not known for following rules. But, um, <laughs> you know, the, the high school kids all want to stay in high school and the, and the grade school kids all want to see their friends. So it's it's been really dedicated. So, you know, we're just wrapping up now. And, and I just want to thank all of you for uh, coming on the podcast and telling these great stories about uh, a Catholic school education and why uh, why it's a deserving re- recipient of people's uh, fundraising money. So so everybody, thank you much, very much for joining us today. And to our listeners, we'll be back again next week. Talk to you later.